All right, welcome back. In this video, we're gonna take a look at the respiratory buffer system. In our previous video, we looked at uh, protein and chemical buffers. Specifically, we spent a lot of time looking at the bicarbonate buffer system. The bicarbonate equation is equally important when we're looking at resp respiratory buffers. And in this video, we're gonna take a look at how we utilize the respiratory system in order to manage acids and bases in the body. So to do a, re do a recap of what we talked about previously, and we look at the bicarbonate buffer system, what we're looking at uh, is the equation that looks something like this. Uh, we have H2O plus CO2. As we mentioned before, CO2 is primarily coming from the breakdown of carbohydrates um, in cellular metabolism. So it's the byproduct of our cellular metabolism. We have H2O plus CO2. We have an equation that is capable of moving in either direction, back towards H2O or CO2, or forwards towards uh, carbonic acid, which is h 2 CO3. Carbonic acid is a relatively weak acid which can dissociate into hydrogen ions and bicarbonate which is the conjugate base and bicarbonate is written as HCO3 negative. And this equation is primarily responsible for the majority of acid base balance of the body and this is how the body is going to man manage its acids and bases. Now when we're looking at this equation and we take a look at one of the byproducts in particular uh, being CO2, we can tell that the respiratory system is going to play a large role in acid-base balance. So like we talked about before, this equation works on Le Chatelier's principle. So when I have more of one thing on one side of the equation, I want to move to the opposite side to try and reach e equilibrium. So like we spoke about before, if I start to see an increase in hydrogen ions, and when we're talking about this equation, we're primarily talking about hydrogen ions on the right side of the equation. When I see an increase in hydrogen ions, this equation is going to shift to the left and produce H2O and CO2. If I don't have enough or the solution has become more basic or I have too many CO2 uh, molecules, what's gonna happen is this equation is going to shift to the right in order to produce H plus and HCO3 negative. So you can see in either case, if I have too much CO2, that's going to make a difference for which way this equation is going to shift. Or if I have too little CO2, it's going to make a difference for which way this equation is shift. Equally as important, if I see increases or decreases in hydrogen ions, that's going to be uh, correlated to a change in our CO2 concentration as well. So before we get into how we're actually going to use this system to manage acids and bases, what I'd like to do is take a look at the way that the body is going to respond to changes in hydrogen ions and CO2, or how is the respiratory system even going to be stimulated in order to play a role in this buffer system. So when we're speaking about uh, acid bases and buffers in the respiratory system, we have to look at two different types of chemoreceptors. We look at our peripheral and our central chemoreceptors. And the job of the peripheral and central chemoreceptors are to recognize changes in CO2, hydrogen ions, and oxygen concentration. As a result, we're going to see a stimulation of breathing. So what we're looking at here is our medulla and our pons. We have the respiratory center of the uh, apneusic and pneumotastic center in the pons, which are going to be responsible for primary the rate of inspiration and expiration and we have our medulla where our chemoreceptors live so these would be our central chemoreceptors and these chemoreceptors respond primarily to changes in CO2 concentration it's challenging for hydrogen ions to pass the uh, blood-brain barrier so primarily what we're seeing is the central chemoreceptors responding to changes in CO2 concentration. Secondarily, the central chemoreceptors can res respond to changes in hydrogen ions and oxygen concentration, but primarily these chemoreceptors are, are responding to changes in carbon dioxide. And if we take a look a little closer into how these chemoreceptors work, we can start to get an idea of how they're going to respond to changes. So like we said, we're going to see them respond primarily to changes in carbon dioxide concentration. So when we see an increase or we start to see an increase in CO2 concentration within the blood, these chemoreceptors are going to respond by sending a signal or they're going to recognize the changes in the CO2 and they're going to respond by sending a signal to the uh, ponds. So these neurons are triggered by a change in CO2 concentration. They're going to send a signal up to the ponds and to the pontine nuclei here. And these apneusic and pneumotastic centers are going to lead to an, are going to send a 
signal to the lungs which is going to lead to an increase or decrease in respiratory rate. In this case, as we have an increase in CO2 concentration, we know we want to blow that off or we want to get rid of that CO2 concentration. So this pontine nuclei is going to send a signal out to the lungs that says to increase respiratory rate in order to get rid of that CO2. So when we have an increase in CO2, it's primarily going to be recognized by our central chemoreceptors. Central chemoreceptors are going to send a signal up to the pons, which is going to send a signal to the lungs uh, to increase respiratory rate and as a result blow off more CO2. We also have peripheral chemoreceptors. Uh, the peripheral chemoreceptors live in our aortic arch and they also live in our carotid bodies. So we have uh, peripheral chemoreceptors in the aortic arch and the carotid bodies. And the job of these uh, is to respond to changes in hydrogen ions and oxygen concentration. So these are our peripheral chemoreceptors and they're primarily responding to changes in hydrogen ions and oxygen concentration. Uh, secondarily, they will respond to changes in CO2. So we're seeing the opposite in our peripheral chemoreceptors compared to our central chemoreceptors. The same thing is going to happen when uh, these chemoreceptors notice a change in, for example, uh, hydrogen ion concentration. They're going to increase respiratory rate to try and blow off CO2 and shift this equation over to uh, the left so that we can get rid of hydrogen ions um, by creating, getting rid of CO2 and creating more CO2. So peripheral chemoreceptors respond primarily to hydrogen ions and oxygen concentrations. And as a result, we're going to see a response by the chemoreceptors in the aortic arch and the carotid bodies, which can also send that signal over to our pontine nucleus to increase or decrease respiratory rate. Alright, to finish off, let's take a look at how these systems are going to work together or how changes in hydrogen ion concentration or pH concentration are actually going to interact with CO2 levels to change the way someone breathes in order to manage acid-base balance or in order to actually buffer using the respiratory system. So if we take a look at our lungs and break it down further into our alveoli and bloodstream. What we can start to do is see how these changes in CO2 levels or changes in hydrogen levels are actually going to make a difference for our acid-base balance. So again, if we write our equation or we write what we're looking at in terms of uh, how we're going to transport these gases, we have H2O plus CO2 leading to carbonic acid, H2CO3 and again leading to H plus plus HCO3 negative. And the important thing for us to look at is how changes, or what we're going to look at here, is how changes in hydrogen ion concentration or changes in pH level are going to affect this equation and how these changes in this equation are subsequently going to affect the respiratory system. So what we're looking at is, and what we're primarily looking at, is how this body's going or how the body is going to respond to changes in hydrogen ion concentration. So when we start to see an increase in hydrogen ion concentration or a decrease in pH, a couple of things are going to happen. We know that as we have an increase in hydrogen ions, this equation is going to shift to the left. We understand that Le Chatelier's principle dictates that as we increase the amount of one of these substrates, we increase the compounds on one side of this equation, it's going to lead to a subsequent shift to the opposite side in order to maintain balance or maintain an equilibrium. Again, we spoke before uh, about this being very similar to a balancing scale. As I start to see too many hydrogen ions on one side of the equation, or I start to see a buildup of hydrogen ions on one side of this equation, I need to start making more CO2 or shifting this equation to make more CO2 so that I can start balancing that scale out and make our way back to equilibrium. So one of the things that's going to happen is I have an increase in hydrogen ion concentration is this is going to lead to a leftward shift in this equation which is going to lead to a subsequent increase in CO2 levels.
Now, if we think back to what we're speaking about with our chemoreceptors, our central and peripheral chemoreceptors, we know that an increase in CO2 concentration is going to stimulate our central chemoreceptors. So the chemoreceptors within our medulla are going to respond to this increase in CO2. So an increase in CO2 levels or an increase in CO2 levels is going to trigger the medulla, which is going to send a signal to our pons. And we know that the pons is going to send a signal back to the uh, lungs, which is going to lead to an increase in respiratory rate. As we increase this respiratory rate, we know that we're going to start blowing off more CO2, or the quick, more quickly we breathe, the more CO2 we start to blow off. So an increase in respiratory rate leads to uh, us blowing off CO2 or getting rid of CO2. We know that as we blow off that CO2, we're actually going to reduce the amount of CO2 on this equation, further promote shifting to the left here, which is going to lead to a reduction in our hydrogen ion concentration. If we look at how our peripheral chemoreceptors are going to play a role in this, we know that they actually respond directly to increases in hydrogen ion concentration. So as our hydrogen ion concentration increases, that sends a signal to our peripheral chemoreceptors, which are going to recognize that the pH has decreased or the hydrogen ion levels have increased. Those peripheral chemoreceptors are going to send uh, their own signal down to our pons, which is again going to, sorry, down to our pons, which is again going to lead to this increase in respiratory rate and start blowing off more CO2 or having this person start blowing off much more CO2 again. So as a result, our CO2 levels fall. So if we take a look at the way this equation is going to look when the body has truly compensated or where we, when we've seen successful compensation, is now because the body has blown off all the CO2, we should actually see our H2O plus a reduced level of carbon dioxide or decreased CO2 levels, H2CO3, H+. Plus, but our H plus levels should be falling as we're continuing to push this equation to the left in order to produce more uh, CO2. So as the CO2 levels fall, we're hoping to push this equation further to the left in order to reduce our hydrogen ion concentrations or at least bring them back down to normal levels. As these things even out, we'll have negative feedback and the compensatory mechanisms will stop acting. So again, to kind of break that down, as we have an increase in hydrogen ion concentration, we see Le Chatelier's principle dictating that this equation will shift to the left, promoting an increase in carbon dioxide. This increase in carbon dioxide will stimulate central chemo chemoreceptors in the medulla to stimulate the pons and lead to a increase in respiratory rate blowing off CO2. The increase in hydrogen ions themselves will stimulate peripheral chemoreceptors, which will also send a signal to the pons also leading to an increase in respiratory rate, leading to the patient, again, blowing off more CO2. What the body should be recognizing here is that we have a reduction in CO2, or CO2 levels are now falling. This is further promoting this leftward shift or further promoting the production of H2O and CO2, and subsequently decreasing the amount of hydrogen ions that are present uh, in the body, as a result, increasing pH and hopefully bringing the body back to its homeostatic normal of 7.4. So before I end this video, I'd like to just give a brief uh, overview using a flowchart of some of the things we talked about. So we're going to take a look at just how the body is going to use the respiratory system to buffer changes in acid-base balance. Obviously, we've talked a lot about changes when we see an increase in hydrogen ion concentration. Obviously, if we see a decrease in hydrogen ion concentration. These things are going to be opposite. Um, so you can see I have the equation down here at the bottom that lets us know what we're talking about. So here's our bicarbonate uh, equation here. And what we're going to talk about is when we have an increase in hydrogen ion concentration. So as we see an increase in this hydrogen ion concentration, one of the things that's going to happen is we're going to shift this equation to the left, or Le Chatelier's principle is going to lead us to shift this equation to the left to balance the scales in terms of how much of each compound we have on either side of the equation. Following this left shift, what we're going to see is an increase in CO2, which will stimulate our central chemoreceptors. We know those central chemoreceptors are going to stimulate our pons, 
which is going to lead to an increase in respiratory rate. And it's going to lead us to start blowing off CO2. This is one of the ways that we're going to use the respiratory system to compensate for changes in acid-base balance. As we blow off that CO2, we're going to promote a further left shift. And as a result, we're going to reduce our hydrogen ion concentration, hopefully bringing our pH back to its normal level. One of the things we're also going to see with this increase in hydrogen ion, or this increase in hydrogen ion concentration is we're going to stimulate peripheral chemoreceptors. The stimulation of those peripheral chemoreceptors are going to do the same things. Stimulate the pons, increase respiratory rate, lead to the person blowing off more CO2, further promoting a left shift, and as a result, decreasing our hydrogen ion concentration. So as we see an increase in hydrogen ion concentration, we shift this equation to the left through a number of uh, mechanisms in order to balance uh, both sides of that equation. Now, obviously, if we have a decrease in hydrogen ion concentration, we can do the opposite. Stop breathing as fast, retain CO2, push this equation to the right, and bring the person back to a normal pH. So I hope this helps. Uh, we'll see you in the next video.